pain will have a limit at 3. Let's fill out the functions, though. Let's fill out the functions. As we approach, everybody, 3 from the left-hand side, which function are we using? And function 2, again, you said that was x squared minus 5, so we'll write that. How about from the right-hand side, what function are we using? Function 3. What's function 3? I'm assuming your mumbling was square root of x plus 13. Was that what you were mumbling? I <laughs> 13. Okay. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to work this side, this, these ones first, then this one because that one's a little bit more difficult. Let me posit something to you. What I'm going to say is that if a limit exists, a one-sided limit definitely exists. Would you agree to that? Yeah. If a limit overall exists, then a one-sided limit will certainly exist. Agreed? So a limit existing <laughs> is stronger than a one-sided limit existing. Does that make sense to you? Well, here's the cool part about that then. And this, a lot of you were asking, how do I find one-sided limits? Check it out. If you know for sure that a limit exists, then the one-sided limit will exist. Plug in three. Ignore the from the left. Plug in three. What do you get? You get four. Guess what? That's your limit. Why? Because does the limit of three, I'm uh, sorry, does the limit as x approaches three exist for that function? Absolutely, without equivocation, because that right there is a polynomial, right? And you know with polynomials, you can just plug in a number unless you have a problem. Well, if the limit at three exists, the limit from the left certainly has to. It must. That's a weaker statement. Plug in three, you're going to get four. Does that make sense to you? Let's try it next. Again, if a limit exists, a one-sided limit will also exist in the same number. So, ignore the, the plus for a second. Can you plug in 3 without a problem there? What are you going to get? You're going to get 4. Saying the limit exists, therefore the limit from the right, well, it has to exist. If the limit exists, the right and left side limit for sure exists. They have to go to that same number. That's going to be 4. Now you're able to answer your question. Wasn't that nice and easy? You just plug them in. That's it. Just plug them in. If you can, just plug them in. Nice and easy. Does this limit exist? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I don't care that they're not the same function. They go to the same value. Limit is 4. Raise your hand if you're okay with that one so far. <coughs> kind of nice, right? One side limits aren't so bad. These size functions, they can get kind of messy. We'll find that over here, but not too, too bad. Do you have any questions on this? Because I'm going to erase it because I need the room. Any questions on that? Okay, so again, if a limit exists, a one side limit will exist. Find out your one side limits. If they're the same, then you limit at that point. For sure, you got it. Now let's start over here. Can I plug this into that function? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, that's a polynomial. So ignore the from <coughs> the right. Plug in negative 2, how much are you going to get? Negative 1. Absolutely, negative 1. There's the issue, okay? Here's the issue. Uh, ignore the from the left. Can I plug in negative 2? <coughs> Aha. So what you're saying is that the limit at negative 2, you don't know whether that exists or not, right? You don't know. What's that mean? Can you, can, can you cross out any part of this? Can you factor and cross it out? Okay, so think back. What do you use if you can't cross out a problem? What do you use? Sign analysis. Sign, the thing you couldn't abbreviate. That's right, the sign analysis thing. You have to use that. So, you can't abbreviate it. It's just going to look funny in your paper. Uh, but you have to use a sign analysis here. So if you have a sign analysis at negative 2, what we care about, what's happening here? What is happening at negative 2? Do you have a hole? Do you have an asymptote? Which one? Folks, you all should be able to tell them that. You all should know that at this point. If you cannot cross out your problem, what is it? It's an asymptote. So what do you have as you approach negative 2? It is certainly an asymptote, yes? It's, we just want to know, is it going upwards or is it going downwards? What could you do to find that out? Any value. Any value to the left over here. So plug in negative 3. If you plug in negative 3 to this function, are you getting a positive or a negative? negative. Definitely a negative. So am I going upwards or downwards? Yeah. Like that, right? So here's what you're just finding out. 
What does this limit? I don't care from the right. Look, why don't I care about this? Why don't I care? Is this the same function on this side of that negative 2? <coughs> Is that the same function over there? No. No, that's, we've already taken care of that one. I don't care about that. I just care about this. So what does this limit equal? Can you tell me? Yeah, as we go towards negative 2 from the left-hand side, it is going like that. That's going to, towards where? So let me recap just a little, little bit. What you're doing, you're breaking up your interval. You have three different functions in this case. You set up your limits around those breakoffs for your, your intervals. You use left side limits, you use right side limits, and you see if they're the same. Some of them are going to be easy, like what I showed you over here. Others of them, you might have to do a little bit of work. These ones you can just plug in. That one you can just plug in. This one, if you can't cross anything out and eliminate the problem, you've got to use a sign analysis test. Don't get stuck on that. Okay, you're going to have something like this on your test. Don't get stuck on, what do I do? Oh, no, I can't plug in negative 2. What now? Sign analysis test. If you don't know what to do, sign analysis test. You don't got to throw things. Jeez. <laughs> My goodness. You're in luck. <laughs> it survives the crash. You just got that? Yeah. Now you just got that with some nice marks on it. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> don't just get a new motorcycle, okay? <laughs> anyway, uh, so this one, yes, you plug this in. This one, well, you can't cross anything out. You have to do a sign analysis test. Do what you know. Don't get stuck on it. If you can't cross anything out, sign analysis. That's, that's the only two things you got. Okay? So we have this. We were able to plug in a number for the left of our interval. That's the side we were wanting. It went to negative infinity. Do, does the limit exist for this? No. This is negative 1. That's negative infinity. Last time I checked, those things aren't exactly the same. So this does not exist. But that, folks, is how you check. You don't check by plugging in numbers okay, randomly. You check by showing your work like this. This is showing your work. Does that make sense to you? I don't want little tables or anything like that. See, look, the numbers are not the same. I don't care. I want you to show me what this is. Now, the way this graph looks, if you want to see why this doesn't exist, uh, what this thing is is a parabola, part of a parabola, that's symmetrical around the y-axis and intersects at negative 5. It's going from... negative 2 non-inclusively to 3 inclusively. So if you plug in negative 2, what do we get? Negative 1? Looks like that. And 3, if we plug in 3, uh, we'll get out of that 4. Yeah. Uh, that's not really accurate that part. Can't cross 3 and end to 3, but whatever. Then from there on out we have the square root of x plus 13 which starts at 4 and takes off something like that. And then we have this one, which at, at this point, th I'm sorry, this one, this 1 over x plus 2, if you graph that, that's some sort of descending function that goes like that at that point. Does the limit exist as we approach negative 2? No. no. This is a rough sketch by the way. Does the limit exist here? <coughs> Absolutely, because that was, that was closed off. By the way, it's a function because that's not equal to, and that is. That's okay. We, we don't fail that part. Uh, this part would have had the open circle around it, but it's filled in by that point. So we have this parabola. Limit exists there? Absolutely. Limit exists here? No. Negative infinity and a value. Rich, if you're able to follow that, you feel okay with it. Good deal. Are you ready for some trigonometry? Mm -hmm. I know it's supposed to be trigonometry Tuesday. But we're, we're a day early, so it's all good. Was that one of your drinking party ideas? Drinking party ideas? I don't know drinking parties. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. Limits of trig functions. Okay, there's a couple things you have to buy in on for me to do this properly. And the first thing you got to buy in on is that sine and cosine are continuous everywhere. Continuous means you can draw it without lifting your pencil off the paper. Can you draw sine and cosine such that they are continuous? Do you ever lift your pencil off the paper? No. So they are continuous. 
So first thing, this is going to come up later in our class, but I want to say it now. Sine and cosine are continuous everywhere. Because we can do that, because there are no problems, we can use something that we use for polynomials. You see, polynomials were continuous everywhere. If you think about any polynomial, I'm not talking about a rational function, okay? I'm not talking about denominators, I'm not talking about roots that we have over here. This is a rational function, clearly it's not continuous everywhere. Negative 2 fails. This is not a uh, continuous everywhere because it doesn't even exist for part of it, okay? So we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is continuous functions like this one, that's continuous everywhere. You're not going to have a problem, no holes, no asymptotes. Agreed? Sine and cosine, we just said are the same thing. Therefore, if we have sine and cosine are continuous everywhere, we can apply the same logic and say, then the limit of sine of x as x approaches a is, what do you think? It's not a. It's not a. You wouldn't say this. You wouldn't say the limit as x approaches 5 of x squared minus 5 is 5. That's not true. What would you do to find it? Plug in a. You would plug it in. So to find the limit of this, what would we do? We plugged in, right? It wasn't negative 2. It's what we got after we plugged it in. So it's not a. What is it? Sine of a. Sine of a. Absolutely. Likewise, because cosine is also continuous everywhere, we can do the same thing. Yeah, that's true. It says that you don't, nothing bad happens, basically. Right. That would be something bad happening. There we go. That looks a little bit better. What about tangent? So my question is, is tangent continuous everywhere? No. Draw a tangent with your hands. How's it go? Looks like you're dancing. <laughs> yeah, you're doing that. I should have used that. I went out dancing the other night. I should have used my, my S curves. It would have been the hit of the party. Probably not. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, so we got to do a little bit more work. Since it's not continuous everywhere, we're going to have to break this down a little bit. So the limit of tan x as x approaches a, let's figure this out. Tell me what is tangent. Using identity, what's tangent? Sure. So we know for a fact that the limit of tangent is the same thing as the limit of sine over cosine. True? <laughs> Very true. Very true. Now, there was one property of limits that said you can separate limits by division. Remember that property? Kind of cool. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. 